Oh, hi, Mr. Father Vecchio. Welcome to World's History. I didn't see it there. Now that you're here, let's talk about Marco Polo. Marco Polo was born in Venice, Italy in the year 1254. He explored many parts of Asia between the years 1271 to 1295. That's 24 years. He had traveled from Venice via the Mediterranean Sea to the northwestern tip of Arabia, then traveled north to the southern tip of the Black Sea. From there, he travels south to present-day Afghanistan. Then he travels west across Asia, encountering the Himalayas and the Gobi Desert to arrive in the Shangtu, China. In China, Kublai Khan, you'll learn more about him later, sent Marco on many diplomatic missions from Mr. Khan. These missions learned, led Marco to places in Asia no other European had ever been before. His, re his return journey brought him around the southern side of Asia by water. He then landed in present-day Afghanistan, traveling northwest to the Black Sea, all the way to Constantinople, and then back to Venice. Marco Polo had an extremely rich family that has funded his travels to and from China. His father and his uncle were very successful jewel merchants, bringing Marco Polo along on their second mission to China. Kublai Khan had paid for his diplomatic missions across Asia. Kublai Khan was also the fifth Kangen of the Mongol Empire, as well as the founder and first emperor of the Yuan Dynasty. Boy, these Himalayan mountains hard to climb. Marco Polo had to cross the Himalayan Mountains and the Gobi Desert to reach his destination of China. While crossing the Gobi Desert, he had gotten an illness from the heat and was forced to retreat to the mountains so he could get better. On his way back from China, he had encountered nomads wanting and successfully stealing 4,000 Byzantine gold coins while passing through the kingdom of Trespon, present-day Turkey. Amazingly, he still came back with a lot more goods and gold than, he, than when he went to China, showing off how rich he can become from visiting China. Marco Polo's intention for traveling to Asia was that he wanted to establish trade relationship between the Europeans and the Asians. Marco Polo had brought a lot of the Western culture to Asia and Eastern culture to the West. Because of his extensive and successful travel, he influenced the Europeans and the Chinese to travel and explore new lands. Instead of being celebrated for coming back with all his golden goods, as well as establishing a trade route with Asia, Marco Polo was sent to prison because he was captured in the war between the cities of Genoa and Venice. Marco led a galley, a vessel used in war, propelled mainly by oars to Genoa to help and aid Venice in the war efforts. Whilst in prison, his cellmate Rosticello de Pisa, an author, helped Marco Polo write a book about his travels to and from China. After being released, his book was published, making him a celebrity in a lot of Europe. He was celebrated for his successful mission to China and influencing many others to take the risk of traveling. Fun fact! Marco Polo had a pet sheep named Marco Polo. When he left for Asia, he was only 17, a few years older than most of us. Wow. Despite popular belief, Marco Polo was not the first European to go to Asia. A Franciscan monk had reached China 50 years before Marco Polo did. Surprisingly, Marco Polo inspired Christopher Columbus to travel and explore to America. In Marco Polo's book, The Travels of Marco Polo, he described many mythical creatures like me trusty Steve right here. Marco Polo was a very important explorer, influencing explorers all across the world. He was a great man who accomplished many things in life. Thanks for watching Marco Polo the Play. Celebrated for his successful mission to China and influence Why? Why, Adrian? Why? War propelled mainly by Venice. Or is all. Why is this so bad?